It's funny because you can just see like a dead, desecrated, decaying mall behind us. And then you got Olive Garden. And then you got me. Hello, welcome back to season four of Julia Tries Everything. We are Bahama Breeze in New Jersey and we are trying everything on the menu. That means loads of appetizers, gorgeous cocktails, seafood, sandwiches, tacos, no salads, steak, dessert, even more cocktails. Like the most beautiful cocktails I think we've ever had. I am so excited. This has been a place that people have been requesting since episode one. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go. Look, come in for some happiness. That's us. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. There's never been an appetizer round that I haven't liked, so I don't think that's gonna, we're not gonna start a problem here today. Um, and to make sure of that, we're gonna start with something that I know I'm gonna love, which is this crab cheese dip. It has a quarter pound of crab, and it's served in a hot skillet with warm tortilla chips and plantain chips. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's like, I will burn your mouth off. Okay. I think the lime with the crab dip is something I'm not used to. So it's making it a lighter, fruitier crab dip, which I don't know if that's what I'm looking for in my dip. I think that the plantain chips with the lime, with the crab, it, I don't know if I'm a fruity crab girl, but if you're really into that, then you're gonna love this. For me, what I'm trying to celebrate here, they don't skimp on the crab or the cheese. So we have a margarita flight. There's classic, dragon fruit, and coconut pineapple. I'm gonna start with the classic, but I like that this is just tequila, lime and lemon. There's no syrup added in here. <coughs> a lot of salt that just went down my nose. That's fresh, that's clean, that's refreshing. Okay, now my palate is cleansed. We have yuca cheese sticks. We have crispy yuca filled with mozzarella, cilantro crema, and a sriracha aioli for dipping. If you've never had yuca before, it's basically a really starchy, almost like a potato in some ways. It's in South America. It's the third most eaten, consumed grain after rice and maize. I'm interested of like yuca filled mozzarella sticks. So it's like a potato mozzarella stick, like a, a french fry mozzarella stick birthed together. We will find out. Ooh, that's cilantro crema. Oh my gosh. I have to say, I didn't taste anything of this. It's a starchy mozzarella stick. It's very, I'm very confused. It's half French fry, half mozz stick. The sriracha aioli is delicious. Where we've had <laughs> a lot of sriracha aiolis. This one I like has a little bit more of a dill flavor to it, but the cilantro crema, glorious. You could stick themselves. They're very plain, but I guess that's so that they can play well with the sauces. Up next, we have crispy conch fritters. They're filled with corn, bell peppers, and a citrus mustard sauce for dipping. Do you think I need to explain what conch is? They're kind of hermit crab-like creatures. Conch is really, really tough, so they have to cut it into really tiny pieces, which is why most of the time you're gonna see it in a fritter form. It just makes it so it's easier to chew, because it's not like the most tender, um, Animal. animal, sorry, animal, sorry. Okay, mustard, your pet tastes delicious. Great. <laughs> this is the perfect amount of spicy citrus mustard sauce that I'm looking for. It really just like, it, it almost reminds me of how a wasabi will really like clear your sinuses. It's giving me that same type of feeling. These conch fritters are the texture on the outside of them is the right amount of crispy when you're biting into it. So you have that really soft, pillowy, slightly starchy inside and a little crispy exterior. Firecracker shrimp. Doesn't it look like a little bunny ears? Like put little bunny, like little eyeballs here and it's a little bunny hopping around the plate. We have crispy battered firecracker shrimp with a sriracha aioli drizzle and a little bit of extra on the side in case you're feeling it. 
So this is firecracker shrimp. I'm assuming this is their version of the bang bang shrimp that we know and love so dearly. This is a big serving of it. It's got the heat. It's got that great sauce. It's really crispy deep fried shrimp. I'm trying to decide if I want it to be more fried or less fried. It's like an, it's like in a purgatory of fried. This dragon fruit margarita, I don't even care if it tastes good because it is the cutest thing. So we went from a margarita that just had tequila, lime, and lemon to a margarita that has tequila, triple sec, dragon fruit, key lime juice, and sweet and sour mix. It's like the rich aunt, or like, <laughs> this is like, this, they aren't in the same family almost. They're like, it's like the one cousin that you're like, are we even related? Like this one. Yeah, honestly, I would serve that at my birthday too. We have crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside wings, served with jerk barbecue sauce. Do these not look like a bunch of women's, like this is the booty and that's the leg. She is provocative. It's like a girl being real sexy. Yep. Okay, anyways, we're gonna rip her apart. Mmm. This has like cumin, cinnamon, five spice. Oh, it tastes like five spice. It's really crispy and juicy. Having a warm cinnamon feeling with your chicken can be slightly confusing if you're not used to that, but it is so delicious, especially with the barbecue sauce. It's just like, it's just a different way of eating your chicken. It's so, oh, that's good. So tequila, Coco Lopez, pineapple, and lime juices. Actually pretty simple. And look at the coconut shavings on here. It's gorgeous. Oh. Sorry. It's a pina colada. It's a pina colada with some tequila in there. That tastes like a vacation in a cup. That is, I forgot that I was in New Jersey for a second. We have beef empanadas, seasoned beef, potatoes, and a seasoned sour cream and pineapple chutney for dressing. That's some really good curry going on in there. Zero dryness happening here. You have to try it with the sour cream. You like the sour cream? Okay. Oh my God, I, I'm shocked. Mm, hold it up for me. Look at that. That's amazing. It's all over my camera and I'm okay with it. It is so good. So this is our coconut shrimp and I think it looks like little scorpions. <laughs> Tell me that this doesn't look like it's gonna go. <laughs> what sound does a scorpion make? Okay, well we're not eating scorpion today. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry. But we are gonna have this citrus mustard sauce. They're so flat, these shrimps. <laughs> I have the same critique for both shrimps, that their sauces are so good and so powerful and bold, that they do overpower the shrimp. Shrimp is very delicate and light. It kind of needs more like a buttery, lighter sauce than these. If you have the coconut shrimp on its own with no sauce, it's really crunchy and sweet, and it goes perfectly with the, <laughs> the coconut pineapple margarita. It's a three-way tie between the beef empanadas, the Jamaican jerk wings, and the conch fritters. You cannot go wrong with any of them. I think it just depends on how hungry you are. Mm, ready for round two? No, I feel really full because I ate so much beef and banana. I'm burping it now. We are in the handhelds round. We have burgers, sandwiches, and tacos. Okay, we have the honey butter chicken sandwich. Okay, it's really soft, that brioche bun. Oh. Mmm, there it is. There we go, there's some sauce and pickles. Mm-hmm. Wow, I need one more bite. That's gonna get all over my camera. You got it, you okay? Oh no. Be strong. I don't know if I taste oh, too- Oh my God, no, this is my, no. The bread is soft but crispy. The chicken is perfectly breaded. That honey butter sauce is really delicate. It's really like, you're really just tasting fried chicken and a little bit of pickle. You don't taste too much of the honey butter, which I'm okay with in this. You're just gonna leave it on the side of the table? Let me live my life. Oh my God, put it, put it back on the plate. Oh my gosh. We have the ultimate pineapple. It has spiced rum, Coco Lopez, Bacardi black rum, and a strawberry iced swirl. We should mention that you can get this virgin as well, which means this is definitely a fan favorite here. 
I asked them how many pineapples do they go through in a typical day, and they said, you don't wanna know. Also, the fact that this one at our location is only $13, it's kind of a great deal. Usually, if you were at like a really nice hotel or you know, like on a vacation of any sort, this would be like 20 to $30. Come on. It needs to be stirred. No! It needs to be stirred. Julia. I'm serious, it needs to be stirred. It needs to be stirred. You better eat that French. I'll eat the fry, I'll eat the fry. You know what, people do that at Wendy's all the time with a Frosty. If you drank this at a pool, you would not be allowed to go in the water. This drink is a liability in a cup. This is, I'm already saying it, you can't drive home after this thing. Should I try the french fry that I dipped yeah, in? Yeah, you should. Honestly, what if it tastes really good? It doesn't. <laughs> See, I'm already making bad choices after drinking just one sip of that. Think about if you finished it. This is the black bean barbecue burger. It has a guava barbecue sauce on it with pepper jack cheese and guac. I love guava. Okay. Wow. I don't know if I'm tasting any of the guava. When we were just at Yard House, we had this really good blueberry ketchup and it really made the dish. So I was hoping that the guava would do the same because it's also fun fact, uh, Bahama Breeze, Yard House, Olive Garden, where else? There's a few other restaurants that are all owned by the same company. So I would assume that they would have similar kind of like sauce treatments. Um, but the guava isn't really like super strong here. This tastes super fresh. You're not really tasting too much of the burger meat per se. You're tasting way more of the pepper jack cheese and the guac, which I am happy about. It's like extra seasoned. Do we want to do this burger next that you knocked over completely when we were doing beauties? I don't remember that. I'm gonna say that their burgers here are challenging. They're slippery, it's not my fault. We have the Applewood Bacon and Cheddar Burger. Half pound of fresh beef topped with crisp bacon, cheddar cheese, pickles, tomatoes, red onion, and lettuce on a toasted brioche bun. Yeah, this thing is gorgeous. When you look up a picture of a bacon cheeseburger, this would be, you know, the photo that they show you. Okay. I just tasted lettuce. <laughs> that lettuce was trying to get up my nose. I knew what it was trying to do. This is a very standard burger. If I'm coming to Bahama Breeze, I'm not coming here for a burger. The way that this chicken sandwich was screaming at me and saying, hello, I'm here, versus this burger, they're not in the same category. Our second to last thing, we're having the coconut shrimp tacos. Flour tortillas with pineapple chutney, tomato salsa, sriracha aioli, and shredded cabbage. I have the highest hopes for this. It just looks gorgeous. I wanna see if it already has, it doesn't look like it has that aioli on it yet, so I'm gonna put it on there. Mmm. Mm-hmm. A bacon cheeseburger at Bahama Breeze? Meh. Coconut shrimp taco at Bahama Breeze? Yes. This is fruity and fresh and has the right amount of crunch going on. Like the textures are all playing well together. Like they all read the memo and agreed. We're gonna end this round with our pineapple coconut martini. We have coconut rum, pineapple juice, and a rum soaked pineapple. Oh no. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna die from pickles and rum pineapples. Got a little martini here. giving me too much of a sunscreen vibe. I'm sure this tastes delicious if you don't already have that predisposition. You know what it is? It's a really acceptable, delicate version of this pineapple drink. This pineapple drink is like gone 200 extra miles than it needed to, and this one's more of the downplayed, relaxed version, the calm version of it. Favorites of this round, ultimate pineapple, so fun, just get it, and the hot honey chicken. That was devastation. We, yeah, we can't stop eating it. We just keep eating it. Mm. Round three. Three. Oh my god. It's stunning. Enjoy. Thank you. It's everything's so beautiful here. <laughs> SpongeBob's house just got cut in half. So sad. So beautiful. 
But we're not gonna eat that first. We're gonna drink this first. This is the Bahama Rita, which is one of the most popular drinks that you could order here. This is tequila, kiwi melon, strawberry, and mango. And then there's a spiked cactus juice on the side here. Wait, so, oh, I see, oh. Oh, a little clip. Do people drink this on the side? So it's spiked cactus juice, so it's not just a shot. Oh. Just a little bit. Yeah. Not do too you, much. It's like a, do you want me to have drunk camera work? Do kind of. Me? I'm gonna put this on the top, I think. Famous last words right there. I'm not sure if you're supposed to mix this all together or enjoy each layer on its own. Brain food. This tastes like a sweet tart slash starburst in a margarita form. That is really delicious. It's the right amount of tart and sweet, so it's not super sugary, which when you look at the colors of this, oh no, brain freeze is hitting. If you don't get a brain freeze while having this, it looks like it would be super sugary, which I mean, it probably is really sugary, but it doesn't taste that way. It has the right amount of tartness to it that makes it so that you just can keep on drinking it. Up next, we have the seafood paella. We have sauteed scallops, shrimp, fish, mussels, chicken, and chorizo sausage, and a yellow rice. So we're mixing the seafood with our other proteins. Interesting, interesting, okay. Ooh, wait, I need a muscle. What does that rice taste to me? It tastes like, like the juice of mussels and clams with bell peppers, and I know that doesn't sound like erotic to you, but it's really working really well for this dish. The paella, I would say the yellow rice is very fluffy. There's no crunchy bits to it. For me, I do like a little bit of a crunch somewhere in the paella, but I would say this is a, a beginner's paella. If you've never had it and you wanna try it and you're feeling a little nervous about mixing all these fish and meats together, this is a good place to start. Chelsea, eat me. Uh, and I, I don't have a napkin. Aw, oh, shucks. I mean this in the best way possible. Doesn't this dish look like it would be at Red Lobster? So this is the lobster and shrimp linguine, which has sauteed mushrooms and the, ooh, lobster cream sauce. I need to smell it. Oh, it smells like a rich person. Mm, this is what a rich person tastes like. Incredible, the amount of lobster that comes in this. There are just chunks and chunks of lobster everywhere. Lots of shrimp. I don't think we need the mushrooms. I'm, I welcome them. This feels like a really nice, rich, fancy meal here. Most of the other meals that we've had are pretty light. This is like extremely dense. If you come to Bahama Breeze and you really missed Olive Garden, but you're at Bahama Breeze, order this. The people who actually work at Bahama Breeze, this is one of their favorite things to eat. Whenever the people who actually work at a restaurant like something enough that they continuously eat it, I feel like that says so much. So this is the jerk shrimp pineapple bowl. We have sauteed shrimp, white rice, diced pineapples, sweet peppers, and a jerk pineapple glaze. That looks beautiful. Oh, oops, slippery guy. It smells like cumin and like allspice. I can see why people who work here would keep eating this. You can't get tired of it. Oh my gosh, wait. I don't know if you can show this on camera. Do you see how much sauce is in here? Can you see oh that? Oh my God, that's incredible. Like there's so much sauce. Yeah, the sauce is everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I would come back for this many times. Poor SpongeBob. Sorry, your home is delicious. That's a heavy boy. Oh wait, I forgot there's another drink. It's Mojito Cubano. <gasps> is that sugar cane on the side? Wait, I think that is. It is. So this is rum, sugar cane, and lime juice. We used to kind of chew on it and suck out the sugar. Delicious. Oh, do you hear that sound it's making? This is the best kind of crushed ice where you can kind of like crunch, crunch, crunch as you're drinking your drink. Delicious. Ooh, really. 
I think I went all the way to the bottom and it's extremely lime heavy on the bottom. What I really like about this mojito is that it's not too sugary. There are so many mojitos out there that half of the cup feels like it's just sugar water. And as you're drinking it, you're like, I can taste my hangover coming. Not with this one. This one tastes way cleaner. As someone who's not a huge rum lover, I am really, really loving this drink. We have the Tequila Sunburn Glazed Salmon. It's topped with pineapple mango salsa and served with cinnamon mashed sweet potatoes and green beans. We don't usually taste the sides, but I think we have to. It looks like baby food. We're, we're gonna, we're, we will acknowledge that because it's mashed potatoes. If you love Thanksgiving sweet potatoes with the cinnamon and the marshmallow, you'll love that. Tequila sunburn with the salsa. Here we go. Beautiful. What I like about this dish is that the flavors are all so unique. I really don't think that we would get this at any other restaurant. Cinnamon sweet potatoes and this like tequila zesty salmon. I just, I don't think we would ever get this somewhere else. For me, it's a little bit too much of mix of flavors going on. I think that you can get a, pr a really similar type of feeling from this shrimp. This was amazing, showstopper, nothing compares. And for the drinks so far, the Bahama Rita is my favorite. These ribs are huge. We have the buttermilk fried chicken, which is another staff favorite here. It has tomatoes, corn, black bean salsa, melted cheese layers over mashed potatoes with a lemon butter sauce. What I understand is the lemon butter sauce is quite literally to die for. Have you ever had a KFC bowl? Similar to this, it doesn't look gorgeous <laughs> once you start cutting into it, but once you're eating it, it just is, it's just like the most comforting thing that you could possibly shove into your face. And that's exactly what this is. This is a Caribbean hangover dish, if I've ever thought of one. Here we go. Oh wait, I really haven't done any fun facts for this episode. Fun fact. <laughs> she forget what it was. Bahama Breeze really did start more from like a corporate idea um, where they were like, we know that people love Caribbean food, let's make it into a chain. The two states with the most Bahama Breezes is Florida and then New Jersey. <laughs> we have the top sirloin and coconut shrimp. It has mashed potatoes, broccoli, and a citrus mustard sauce for dipping. I really want that in a jar. I haven't said that in a long time about a sauce. But I, I strongly feel that way. Oh, two forks, oops, sorry. This herb butter just oh, all over the sirloin is gorgeous, glossy, sexy. Now let's put it in my face. I mean, maybe it's a more of a churrasco type seasoning, but it's tasting really salty parsley Italian. So it's like an Italian steak. <laughs> we already know how we feel about the coconut shrimp, but you know, maybe it'll taste different this time. Who's to say? <laughs> I still feel the same way. This mustard sauce is a little too strong for the coconut shrimp. I think that the coconut shrimp and the steak together without the sauce blend really well. You have so much more to do. I know. Okay, this is the Bahama Mama. So this is a classic Caribbean drink that you can get here. There's three rums in here. Coconut rum, black rum, silver rum, banana liqueur, pineapple, and orange juice. If you grew up anywhere that sells pog, passion orange guava juice, that's what this is, with just an insane amount of rum in it. This is incredibly chuggable. It, you barely can taste the rum. Like you can taste the sugary sweetness of the rum, but that's about it. It really just, I was gonna say messes. It really melds together. You're cute. I wanna take that glass home. We have the baby back ribs. Guava barbecue sauce served with mashed potatoes. Oh, it can be served with mashed potatoes and broccoli, but we went with the fries. <laughs> What's really funny is Chelsea made a comment. She's like, it's weird. We haven't had many vegetables today. Like where's the salad? And like this one came with vegetables and I was like, fries. That's good. Um, okay, we have our guava barbecue sauce. Let's try it with the fry first. Do you see how thick that is? Wow, that's luscious. That's a lot of barbecue sauce on one fry. It's slightly guava. 
I think I want the guava to be really like punching me in the face. It's not doing that. Big ass barbecues. Wait, not even just called barbecue wings, barbecue ribs. I want to say something controversial, but let me have one more bite. Tastes like chicken. What? Am I crazy? I might be crazy. It tastes like chicken thighs. No. Maybe I am losing it. Happens. I feel like I could just sit here and accidentally have the whole thing vanish. It really does, I hate overusing the word melt in your mouth, but the meat really is melting. We have the Skirt State Churrasco, which has uh, chimichurri, yellow rice, black beans, and sweet plantains. We're gonna have some parsley and garlic. It's gonna be really green and fresh and zesty all in one bite. So this cut of meat can be a little bit tougher, but that's why they have it really, really thin like so. So, and also the chimichurri is kind of like tenderizing the meat. Okay, we have the jerk chicken pasta. It has sliced jerk chicken breast, asparagus, mushrooms, bow tie pasta, and a Parmesan cream sauce. When I hear jerk chicken, I think of like a darker colored sauce. I wasn't expecting this cream based sauce on here. Okay, let's just try the chicken on its own then. It does look like it's really, really tender. The chicken on its own, well seasoned, obviously. Okay, mushroom, bow tie, asparagus, and chicken. This seems like such a mix of flavors. Like it's, it's jerk meets Italian. I like this way more than I expected. Looking at it, I was kind of like, it's, it seems like it could go I don't know, trying to mix, when you try to do too much fusion, sometimes it gets a little, instead of fusion, it becomes confusion. This is not that. I'm very, very shocked in a good way. We have the Mystic Margarita, tequila, elder liqueur, lime and pineapple juice, and an extra shot of prickly pear infused passion fruit rum. This has to be the prettiest drink that we've had. This is what I would make for my mom on Mother's Day. And it has an orchid. Scientific name, Phalaenopsis. But when I was a kid, I used to love making it do, like, talk. I'd be like, Chelsea, we're at the Bahama Breeze. I mean, I like that better than the muscle that talked to me. The muscle that talked to you was a little, that was a little much. Oh my gosh. It's like a very, like, elderflower and pear and kind of lychee flavors all kind of go together. You should try it. Oh boy. It's really, like, I love elderflower, so that drink is doing it for me. I'm gonna say something weird. What? This tastes like Disney World. Okay. I think that's a compliment to Disney World. Yes. Okay. <laughs> also, I'm keeping this. I'm totally putting this in my mouth. Do I have to, is it sticky? Wait. <laughs> we have the Jamaican stuffed plantain bowl. Whole caramelized sweet plantain filled with yellow rice, mildly spiced ground beef, black bean, sauce, and cheese. We got our bunny ears again. Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea, save me. I'm losing it. I'm actively, you are watching a woman lose it in New Jersey at a Bahama breeze. Okay. This to me is something that I would have for lunch. It feels like it feels like it's gonna be really filling, but not in a way that's gonna make you feel ill after. There's not too much of a cream sauce going on. There's not too much cheese. It feels like it's actually really well rounded. Mm-hmm. Mmm, what is that sauce on there? It just says sauce? The sauce deserves more than that. If I really had to pick what I was gonna eat when I'm here, it's gonna be that fried chicken. That, you're not gonna be able to make at home. It's very unique, and you're probably gonna get, eat like half of it and give up, but it is so good. If you're not trying to eat like half a pound of cheese, I really do actually recommend the plantain bowl over all of these. Drink-wise, I don't need to say it again, I really, I really don't. Oh dear. 
to be clear before we even start this round, you can order a whole key lime pie, but you can also get it by the slice. We are not going to break into this. We have it right here. But this is how you can also order it. <sighs> Let's make that very clear, do not worry. But we should definitely take this back to the office. Oh yeah. We have an office party today. Yeah. We should definitely take this back. Okay, we have the chocolate island. This is a rich chocolate mousse on a fudge brownie in chocolate sauce and vanilla bean anglaise. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Get your fork out. Get your fork out. Uh-huh. Oh my God. You know how a lot of restaurants have like a really boring brownie sundae thing and the brownie's kind of sad because yeah. it's been sitting there for a few days? Not this. This is the star of the show. This is phenomenal. And the vanilla and the chocolate all together, it's light, it's heavenly, it's decadent. Okay, these are fascinating to me. So we have the pineapple cheesecake empanadas. These are pastry shells filled with caramelized rum-soaked pineapple and cheesecake. They have cinnamon sugar on them with raspberry and a chocolate drizzle. Churro-like exterior and a pineapple rum interior. Also, these are really warm. Okay, those are real pieces of pineapple in there. These are brand new to the menu. And I, don't, and I think that these are probably gonna stay on the menu for a while. Oh my gosh. See, this is what I love. A lot of these chain restaurants don't, won't always lean into the theme, right? Like they are fully leaning into the theme. Pineapple, rum, cheesecake, kind of like a churro empanada. You won't get this anywhere else. I love that. It's so delicious. This might be the best round, and I'm not really much of a dessert lover. Let's do the painkiller next. Painkiller is another quintessential Caribbean drink. If you're in New Jersey or the Caribbean, either place, you know, same thing. This has dark rum, Coco Lopez, pineapple, orange juice, and freshly ground nutmeg on top. All right, painkiller, do your worst on me, baby. This is one of my mom's favorite drinks whenever we go vacation. And I think it's just mainly because it's all alcohol. And she's dealing with my ass. I want to end on the key lime pie, so I'm going to just go straight to the next cocktail. This is the Kiwi Melon Martini, which has absolute vodka in it. I think it's meant to be that foamy. Okay. I think it's a texture thing for me. Try it. Is it pulpy? No, just try it before I say what it reminds me of. Oh no. So what's reminding me of is a combination of Nickelodeon slime and the blue milk from Star Wars. Okay, we have to end on the key lime pie because we have to. So you can get the whole key lime pie for $30 or you can get a slice for $8. One thing to know about the whole key lime pie is that it's homemade and you need to give them about 24 hours in advance for them to make it for you because they're typically making it for, by the slice. They need to make sure they have enough to set aside for you. This meringue on here, look how spongy it is. Can you see that? I love that. Homemade graham cracker crust. It smells so good. It's a huge bite. It's a sweeter key lime pie. It's not as tart. I'm used to some of those like key lime curd ones where this is a little bit more of a subtle key lime flavor. I wanna put that mango sauce on my body as a body wash. If you're really into meringue, this is a key lime pie for you. It is so spongy and it's like the golden top on here is gorgeous. I wanna get some of the graham cracker on the side. To me, this is the best bite of key lime pie. The forbidden bite. Oh. It's like a graham cracker cookie, crushed. It's brown butter, graham cracker, cookie, crust. It's a little bit chewy like an oatmeal cookie as a crust form. I really, really like that. I, that was unexpected. I'm used to like a really crumbly, um, a really crumbly crust, but this is a huge slice of key lime pie. I don't know if I could take the whole thing. Like, I don't know if my, I guess if you had a huge party here and you put little birthday cake candles on it, 
but that's a massive slice on its own. If I really could get anything in a larger size, it's gonna be this chocolate island. These are close seconds, the empanada and the key lime pie, but if you have to pick one and you're not sharing it, it's this one. If you're gonna share, fine, go with those two. We did it, we're done. We are boxing up the big ol' cake and everything that is individual and taking that back to the Delish team because we have an actual party tonight and everyone's gonna be able to enjoy the leftovers. Anything that I've put my mouth on, which is most things, are coming back with me. Okay, it's our fourth and final season and there are, the list is getting smaller and smaller by the day. Where have we not gone yet that you really need us to go to? Bubba Gumps. Let us know when we can come. Bye. Until next time, you'll find me here asleep. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. Oh.